Hey, fourth graders and learning coaches. Um, we are on our final vi video on division. And so this is kind of where we're taking all the stuff that we've been talking about with division, this whole um, unit, and applying it to our most complicated strategy, which is the long division standard algorithm or the old school strategy, okay, for long division. Now, before we get started with this, I do want to tell you that if your student tries the strategy and doesn't get it for learning coaches, it's okay. And students, if you try this strategy and you don't get it, it's okay. Stick with the area model partial quotient strategy, okay? That strategy, you're actually doing the exact same things, just in a little bit more organized fashion, and it works a little bit better with how your brain functions as a fourth grader, all right? So this is something that, you know, next year when you see it again, you're going to be like, oh, Oh, now I see how that works. Okay, so it's really okay if you don't get this strategy, but I do want to show it to you guys because it is part of your lessons. This does go with lessons nine and ten. And what I'm actually going to do is going to do two problems side by side. I'm going to do the same problem with the area model and with the long division strategy so that you can see you're actually doing the exact same thing for both problems. Okay, so here we go. All right. Here is our problem. Let's do um, 3,471 divided by 4. 3,471 divided by 4. First thing I'm going to do is think, can I skip count by 4s? No matter what strategy you're doing, the first thing that you are going to do is say, can I skip count by 4s? And if the answer is no, I cannot go for 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and keep going. If you can't do that, that's okay. But you have to come up with a different strategy, okay? And you guys know what my strategy is. It's to list my multiples of 4 so that I don't have to stop every single step of this problem. Every time I get to that divide step, I don't want to have to stop and think about my four times tables. It takes so much more time and you are so much more likely to get frustrated and forget what you're doing if you have to stop every single time and think about your four times tables. It's much, much easier if you just go ahead and take the 30 seconds to write them out. Just trust me on this. Don't be stubborn and say, I don't want to write it out. It's so much faster and so much easier if you do. Okay. So watch how fast it takes me. Ready? So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Let me make that look like a zero there. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay, done. I don't have to think about that again the whole rest of the time that I am doing this problem. I'm also going to go ahead and just right here next to this, write out my division steps that we talked about in the last video. If you guys remember, I gave you an acronym, does McDonald's sell burgers? That stands for divide, multiply, subtract, and bring over. In the um, standard algorithm, long division strategy, the B actually stands for bring down instead of bring over. Over. And you'll see that in just a second, but I'm going to just draw the arrow both ways because it depends on which strategy you're doing as to what the B stands for. But the rest of the steps remain the same. Okay, now I am going to show you how to do long division. This is where you're going to write your problem with your dividend under the division house or whatever you want to call that, that's a division symbol, and your divisor on the outside. Okay, and in this strategy, just kind of like when you're doing your standard algorithm for multiplication strategy, we aren't looking at place value as much as we are with the other strategies. Now, I like the other strategies in looking at place value because it helps you with your number sense and it helps you understand what you're actually dealing with and working with. Um, however, in this strategy that's not necessarily what we're working on. Okay, so you still start by covering up everything after the thousands place, and you see how many times can four go into three, or how many groups of four can I get out of three? Well, four is bigger than three, so the answer is none. You can write a zero, or you can write an x. That's up to you. 
all right? Your next step is to multiply nothing times four, okay? So zero times four is zero. I subtract, I have three, and now, so I did the subtract step. Now I'm going to bring down my four. And I wanna think now how many times can four go into 34. So now we're looking down here and you can already see why this is a little bit more confusing than the area model strategy where you're just looking like going straight across because now we're looking down and then we're going to write up and down and up and down and up. And this is kind of how this, this problem goes. Okay. How many times can four go into 34? How many times can four go into 34? That's our divide step. Well, I'm going to look at my list. I have 32. I have 36. 36 is too big, so it has to be 32, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to write my 8 right up there. And it's really important that your numbers are lined up. And the reason for that, you may think in fourth grade that doesn't make that much of a difference, but it really does because next year you're going to be doing division with decimals. And if your numbers aren't lined up, you're going to be getting the wrong answer a lot. Okay, so it's really important that your number lines up. We were looking at the four in the hundreds place, so we have to write it above the hundreds place. Okay, next step, multiply the number you just wrote times the divisor. Eight times four is 32, and then we subtract, and we're left with two. And then we bring down the seven, okay? And now we're back up to the D step. We're going to keep going until we run out of numbers. Now, again, another mistake that I see a lot of students make is they just stop dividing. They, like, get to a point and they just stop and, unfortunately, end up with the wrong answer because they haven't done enough division, where if you're drawing your boxes, you have to keep dividing until you run out of boxes. So you know when you're done because you're, you're done with your boxes, okay? So... My next step, divide. How many times can four go into 27? I look on here, I have 24, 28, 28 is too big, so it's 24. That's one, two, three, four, five, six times. And I multiply, next step, six times four equals 24. And I'm gonna subtract and I get three. And then I still have more numbers up here that I haven't brought down, so I'm not done. I'm not done until I run out of numbers up top, okay? So now I have to bring down my one. And I want to think, how many times can four go into 31? Well, let's look at this list. We have 28, 32, 32 is bigger, so we have to go with this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And seven times four is 28. And then I'm going to subtract. Oh, I have to do some regrouping. That's okay. You can regroup and when you're doing subtraction here. All right an 11, that becomes a 2, 8, 9, 10, 11. I have 3 left. There's nothing left to bring down. So if I have a number right there, that becomes my remainder. So the answer or the quotient is 867 and there's a remainder of 3. Now I wanted you to see this side by side with the area model because again, your brain may be hurting right now and you may be like, wow, that's tough. And that's, I'm going to make mistakes. And that is okay for your brain to be thinking that. All right. All right. Remember, I write my four out here. I write my 3,471 in here. All right. Thousands, hundreds, tens, ones, right? So everything after the thousands place. How many times can four go into three? Notice I'm saying even the same words. None, right? It can't. Three is smaller. So I'm going to put an X up top or I could write a zero up top, just like I said here, and I'm gonna move 3,471 over into my next box. I'm gonna, this is hundreds, thousands, hundreds. I cover up everything after my hundreds place. Notice what I'm left with. Whoa, right? Okay, is your mind blown yet? All right, so how many times can four go into 34? Well, 32, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It can go in eight times. This is hundreds place, so I have to add my two zeros. 800 times four is 3,200. Notice I'm writing the same numbers. I'm just not, I don't have the zeros there because I haven't brought those digits down yet. That's really the only difference is you're writing the zeros to represent your place value, where right here you don't. 
notice that though? I could write zero, 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 zero. No zeros because that's the ones place. So my numbers are gonna end up being the same. I'm gonna subtract. I get a one, I get a seven, I get a two. So 271 is gonna go over into my next box. All right, thousands, hundreds, tens. Everything after my tens place gets covered and left with 27. How many times does four go into 27? Well, I already wrote it here, so I'm not gonna refigure it out. It goes in six times. This is the tens place, so I add a zero. When I multiply, I get 240. I'm going through this strategy really fast, but I did go over it in a lot of detail in the last video, so I'm not gonna spend the time doing that right now, all right? And I get one and I get three. Notice what I have right here. Hmm. All right, you guys see this? It's the same thing. 31. When I first learned this strategy, I looked at it, I was like, this is crazy. And then I realized I did one side by side and I was like, oh my word. Why have I not been doing division like this the whole time? This is so much easier. It's so much better to look at. All right, thousands, hundreds, tens, ones. How many times can four go into 31? It can go in seven times. Seven times four is 28. I'm gonna subtract and do the same exact subtraction problem. And I'm left with three, which I don't have room to write over here because I put it too close. So I'm just gonna write it down here. All right, I have 867 remainder three. Both problems, I got the same answer. And in both problems, I did the exact same math. I used the exact same set of steps to solve both problems. So here we have our standard algorithm for division, and here we have our area model for division, and you notice they are exactly the same. Does McDonald's sell burgers? Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down or bring over. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down or bring over until you run out of digits to do that with. In this case, until you run out of boxes to do that in. Okay, the number of digits you have to do that with over here is represented by the number of boxes you draw over here. So same strategy, just different look, all right? This and this are the same. This is just, in my opinion, a little bit easier to follow than this, because with this, I just see a lot of mistakes because students don't divide long enough because over here, you know you have to keep dividing. You still have boxes. You can't stop until you run out of boxes and end up with the wrong quotient or like write numbers in the wrong places up here. And then that can get diffuse, confusing when you're doing it with decimals. Whereas over here, that's not necessarily the case. All right, so it's really important that you pick what works best for your brain. But if you're doing this and you're doing it incorrectly over and over and over again, and you're getting frustrated and you're saying, I can't do division, then maybe you're just not ready to do division this way yet. Okay, and that is oh. Okay, I have been teaching fourth grade math for a very long time, and I will tell you even some of my brightest fourth graders had trouble with this. This is just a tough strategy because of it's, it's not logical in where numbers are going and why. This is much more logical, or if you need to even backtrack and do the sharing strategy where you're drawing your place value blocks and you're distributing them between the circles, that's fine too. Whatever strategy works for you, that's what's important that you pick because the, in the end, you need to be able to find the answer and not sit there and stare at a problem and feel frustrated and feel defeated. I don't want students feeling defeated. I want you to feel empowered to be able to do math because you know what? Every single one of you is capable of doing math. Every single one of you is capable of understanding this. Division is our hardest unit of the entire school year, in my opinion. This is the one I see the students struggle with the most. And I want to encourage you, you can do this. All right, you can do division. It's not that bad as long as you're picking a strategy that works well with how your brain works and how your brain thinks and what your math abilities are right now. And knowing that just because you have to draw place value blocks and circles or because you're drawing it in an area model and maybe somebody else is doing it this way or maybe somebody else is doing a completely different strategy that we haven't talked about because there are other ways to do division, that's okay too. Your brain, my brain, you know, your mom and dad's brain, whoever's brain, nobody's brain works the same. We all are unique individuals and all of us need to do different things and in different timing. And that's okay. So please, please, please feel encouraged and empowered to be able to divide. You can 
do this. And if you need help, as always, please reach out to your math teacher and we're more than happy to help you however we can. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next unit. Bye.